as we take a look at integration uh, via the Autodesk Inventor, uh, Factory Design Utilities, Autodesk Docs, and as well as exporting our files and sharing them out on the Revit site. So again, this is Mark Dooley. We have Alice Craig in the background uh, working with us here. She will answer any of the Revit or uh, Autodesk Docs questions as we go. Uh, and we'll also have Q&A at the end as well. One thing that is constant in manufacturing is change. And to keep up, projects, factories, buildings, engineers must be on the same page and continuously getting updated information. Every decision one team makes can affect the other and vice versa. Any error in communication, file sharing, planning, all raise the risk of delays, budget overruns, misinformation, and all of these can be taken care of if we just collaborated our data. So how can we share this data? And that's what we're gonna look at with integrated modeling. It's going from the mechanical side to the architectural side. And that's the power of integrated modeling. It's a solution that connects and organizes optimization, machine optimization, timings, station to station, bringing in the different groups, the lighting, the engineering, the electrical, the plumbing, the concrete, all of these different groups being able to access the same data and having accurate real-time information so that everyone is working with the same data set from any device, keeping departments updated, keeping projects on budget, using fast-paced collaboration, digital factories, digital buildings can help make decisions easier, faster, smarter decisions during every phase of every life cycle. If we're making vehicles, if we're making machines, whether it's projects or products from the beginning, concurrent, concrete, doesn't matter, that integration keeps everyone on point and helping us launch our products faster, increasing efficiency and driving sustainability. And that is what we're gonna look at today, converging that mechanical side, the inventor side, with the BIM side, the Revit side, via Autodesk Docs. Utilizing the factory design utilities for quick layouts for what we're looking for from the mechanical side so that we can represent our projects faster and easier as we're going through. So around the center of our IFM or integrated factory modeling is our actual model. Outside of that, we have all the different silos that can be independent, but we wanna to bring together whether it's subcontractors, vendors, project managers, purchasing, estimating, MEP, electrical engineering, manufacturing, layout. We're gonna bring all of those together, making sure everyone has access to that data. And if we take that first step with that integration, we can make all of this happen and eliminate those separate silos. So in, for the most part, where we're at today, the tools we use for layouts are 2D, whether it's 2D prints in the shop, 2D prints in the field, 2D prints via email, we can use 3D PDFs, we can use step files, SAT files, but those are not up to date. They're not live references back to the models. So we still use Microsoft Word for inspection manuals, paint manuals, maintenance manuals, handwritten notes, sticky notes, Microsoft Excel for schedules, PowerPoint for presentations, as well as our AutoCAD and Inventor 2D drawings, as well as our Revit drawings, our schedules. So we want to bring those together and bringing in all of the different stakeholders with production planning, media supply, ventilation, the lighting, the water, electricity, plumbing, everyone, of course, building planning, project planning. We only see a small excerpt of what's involved using those. So inside each of those, we have different components, different departments, different silos in there that we could bring together and give more of our information to. So the process from going from the classic 2D AutoCAD layout to the 3D side, whether it's Revit, whether it's Inventor, whether it's Plant 3D, if we can integrate that, the MEP data, the piping, the conveyor runs, the sprinkler head system, whatever it is, if we can integrate that into one envelope, that is the aim of the integrated factory modeling, bringing all of our different silos together under one roof and sharing that data amongst our coworkers, other departments. So what are the factory design utilities? Well, factory design utilities run inside or on top of, it's an add-in that runs inside of Inventor, 
AutoCAD Mechanical, AutoCAD Architecture, as well as Navisworks. It has a comprehensive uh, 2D and 3D uh, layout for system assets, the possibility to create the 2D layout in AutoCAD or Inventor and sync those is unique to utilizing the factory design utilities from Autodesk. But the word there is linked. Everything is always linked. So if I'm updating this in Inventor, I can sync it directly to AutoCAD. If I'm updating in AutoCAD, I can sync it back to Inventor. If I've got it in Navisworks, I can go right back to AutoCAD or Inventor. And so it just allows us to keep our products updated, our files updated, linked, and sharing the latest and greatest data there. From the Revit side, we can bring in the Revit files into Inventor and place those using Inventor AnyCAD. We can bring in IFC data with Inventor 2025, and we can export those out as well so we can share those to the architectural world. So when we start looking at the Autodesk doc side, and this is where we collaborate our files, where we're gonna store our files. So here in these screenshots, I've got an Inventor layout using the factory design utilities, got a control room, got some conveyor runs, got some duct work, got a drying booth, a catwalk, safety fence, as well as guardrails. And we're seeing that as a live look inside of docs. So I don't have to email that to anyone. Don't have to export this as an SAT or a step file and send it to anyone because I'm storing this inside Autodesk Docs. Any user that has access to that project can come in and see those files and see my assembly and see the updates that are made and see every version of that file that has been saved. So what's next? Let's go take a look at it. So we're going to start here on the inventor side. And this is an existing uh, assembly one kind of what we were looking at on the screenshot there a minute ago that I've added more to. And so I've got a pallet wrapping booth, updated the spacing of the, uh, the columns in here, added a platform here on this end, uh, workstation here inside uh, the assembly as well, cooling station, made some changes to the conveyor runs. So each time we come in and we hit save on this, and we're saving this to our docs location, our files get updated. So in this one here that I'm looking at, my test assembly 01, I'm up to version 48. So everyone that has access to this doc system, or my docs project, can come in here and see this latest and greatest version. They can also go back and see where it started. We can go all the way back to version one. And this is where we started this. This is the first run we put in. And then where's our next milestone? We come in and we can go look at version 20. And we can see where we've added some components. And then we can come back and we can say, well, let's look at version 44. Where we've suppressed some components and made a different level of detail. And then we can come back and as we see here, the new version has been created from the last save. And so we can come back to version 48, which is right here. And so it's showing all of our represented components, everything right here. So from the inventor side, we hit save. This file is updated in a matter of seconds. And anyone that has access to our docs project can click on this file and view it right here inside the docs project using their web browser of choice and see a live look at the data. Now, also, because I'm storing it here on the docs side, all of my reference files are here. So any of the inventor assemblies I've saved, any of my factory assets that I've saved, all of those are right here. So if they need to pull this down on the other end for inventor use, they have all the components. If they want to reference this in, they can reference this in. If we need to export this out as an IFC or a Revit uh, file, we can do that from inventor, save it right here as well, can be utilized there inside of Revit. On the other end, if Revit users need to send us a building, they can save it right here in this location. We can place it into Inventor using the AnyCAD functionality. And now we've got the building we can work within the walls. So we can collaborate back and forth live using the Autodesk docs here. So how easy it is, is it to get one of these started and have them updated? So if we start a new factory layout here, just using one of our blank templates, no components in here. We've got our system asset browser which this works in 2D and 3D. So we're in Inventor right now. So I've got my system assets, 
architectural, material handling, conveying, safety equipment, uh, robots, process equipment. Uh, we've got structural uh, components if we want to lay in our corner booths or stairs, or if we have I beams we want to put in, or just rectangular columns to for placeholders so we know we can work around something. We've got walls we can bring in if we want to build a room, build a booth. So all of these are out of the box and part of the 2D and 3D asset library that comes with the factory design utilities that is part of the inventor uh, platform or the product design and manufacturing collection. It gets installed post install with inventor, and then we get a factory tab inside of Inventor, inside of AutoCAD, and then we get our asset library here as well. So any of these components we can save as favorites. So you're not having to search through each time. You can also search up here. In this case here, I'm just gonna grab a guardrail and start placing some here inside this model. And the little green dots here, these are our connector points and we can just snap those together. And as these parts were published, they have parameters that can be updated. So in this case here, this one is 36 inches. If I wanted to change this to 42, hit 42, select update right here, and it will go out and update all of these because they are connected to be 42 inches. So if I select this one, it's now 42 inches as well. So we can publish our own assets. We can use the system assets. And depending on the parameters that were published with this that we could utilize, we can change the length or the height of some, change the width, height, and length of others, change the number of stairs that are used in a stair assembly. So if I come in and just bring in a mezzanine and just snap it right here to the floor and select it, we see that here on this side, we can turn on or off gates. So we can add our stairs in here. So if we want to Add a stair on the other side here on gate three. We can update that very quickly and we can add our stair on this side. So the parameter mapping that is very important with digital pro prototyping, as well as working with inventor files, is there. We can utilize those parameters inside the, the factory assets as we start placing these components. So now if we come in and we want to start placing some conveying equipment. So I'll just grab a roller conveyor here, just a straight section, and we'll leave it at that line. And just drop in a few pieces here very quickly. And we're gonna save this. Uh, we'll call this our layout test 02. And yep, we're gonna save it into docs. And so very quickly that gets saved. So here on the dock side, uh, on this side here, we'll come in and we'll refresh here and let it reload the pages here and it will start rendering this file for us here. So we see here is layout two is already shown up here. It's version one because it's the first time it's saved. So it'll start doing the rendering there in the background. And then within 15, 20 seconds of me saving this file, I've got an updated view that all of my coworkers different silos, different personnel, different companies, different vendors can now access and see this data. So this keeps it here live in reference. So where is it putting this? So utilizing the Autodesk desktop connector, you get a drive set up inside your file explorer on your local machine. And that is where you store these files locally. And then as you can see the check marks here, these are the ones that are synced up to the cloud and are in sync currently. So some are ready to go, some have not been updated in a while, some may need to be updated from one end or the other. So I've got a Revit file in here that Alice has shared with me before that she may have saved and I have an updated on my end. So it's still sitting in the cloud, it's not synced in my assembly that I had last opened. But it's showing me the status of every one of these. So she and I are both part of this project. So every file I save in here, she sees. Every file she saves in here, I get to see. And so we can utilize those. So here on the inventor side, if we come back and I wanted to bring in a building that Alice had saved from the Revit side, I could come in here and use the place imported CAD components and scroll down to the Revit files. And then I can see there is that Revit file that she saved for me. 
So I can bring that in here to my assembly, place it, and now I can start constraining my components based off the inside walls or whatever information I have to build this assembly. And then as I add my components to it and I hit save from the dock side, she can see the updates there, pull up the rendering, pull up the, the file, the assembly file there, and see everything that I've added as well. Now also on the dock side here, as we start uh, looking at these files, and we grab this larger one here, as it will render out. So as I grab this file here, so I can come over here and show the model browser. I can turn on or off different options, so or different components, if I want to see them or not. I can isolate. So if I say, you know what, let's just isolate this component kind of gray out everything else and let's just look at this component. So I can rotate around, I can pan around it, I can use a fit to view for this component, I can do a first person walk around it, make that recording, kind of see what we're looking at, work through this, right click, show all objects, everything comes back out. You've still got your view cube here like we have in AutoCAD and Inventor. Uh, so we can rotate these around and look for the different sides. All of this is live editing going back to the inventor file it takes a few seconds from the save for this to render and upgrade here on the Autodesk on the uh, dock side and then we're good to go and everything is in sync there <clears throat> so without just seeing it in docs if I need to send this component specifically over to Alice on the Revit side I can come over here to my environment side go to the BIM content and then I can export this out directly as an IFC file using Inventor 2025 or as a Revit family using Inventor so that she can then place that file directly into her building model. And then if I make any changes on my side and re-export this file and it's saved inside Docs, she gets alerted there's an updated version. And so we're keeping all of this up to date. We're collaborating without having to email each other, without having to call each other, and we're not in the same office. So it just allows us to integrate and bring the inventor side or the AutoCAD side over to the architectural world, to the BIM side, utilizing the Autodesk docs as our go-between and our storage uh, silo here. So if we come back and we start adding more components here, so let me come back out of this here and we grab another mezzanine and we put it on this side. And if we want to grab a stair and put in here, we want to grab a rack system and bring in here any components we want to bring in. We can locate with our standard constraints. We can just drag and drop and move them around. You can copy paste different components. I copy these and paste these. I can then drag them around and I can snap them together as well and they update and adjust and just work together fluidly but then as soon as I hit save and I come back over to my doc side back over to my files here and refresh and it will start updating the rendering here for layout 2 there's version 2 coming through now and so it takes just a few seconds for this file to be updated. And then we've got a live link again at our added components that we just brought in from the inventor side. And so all of our new components are here. So utilizing the docs to store our files allows users from different disciplines to be able to see those as they happen live, as the saves are happening within just a few seconds, and they get to see all the information there. So what's next? Well, we've looked at the inventor model is saved using Autodesk Docs. Files can be used, be viewed using Autodesk Docs. We can export those to Revit for use in the buildings on the architectural or the BIM side. They can be sent back to Inventor and placed using AnyCAD. And all the teams are kept in the loop using our Inventor, our Factory Design, our Autodesk Docs, and our Revit platform. 